Hello and welcome to a new episode of Mind Blow from the Past. When I recently had the opportunity to take a closer look at an anniversary edition camera from the Hasselblad company, I noticed something I never thought possible. It's a limited edition replica of the cameras that were taken to the moon in the 60s and 70s, responsible for the countless high quality images we still have today. Of course, I remember the time when a photograph had to be developed chemically on film. You would only know the outcome after it was developed. But the result was analog, not dependent on a pixel count. Many people are amazed that the images from the lunar surface seem to have a resolution of millions of pixels. But this was long before images even had pixels. It's a negative with microscopic details caused directly by the light that fell through the lens that day. So these photos are in a way more genuine than any photos we produce today with our smartphones. They are just a large number of pixels and data, post-processed by countless microprocessors. In times of AI image generation, we tend to forget that the photo used to be a way to represent reality. There are also no more bad photos, as we immediately delete them or never show them. That's why a while ago I made a video where I sifted through 15,000 images of the moon landing and picked out the most interesting ones that didn't turn out well. They were blurred or overexposed, but still beautiful. Link in the description. When I held the camera, I immediately noticed the large button on the front designed so astronauts could press the shutter with their thick gloves. But then I saw something that made it clear it wasn't a genuine moon camera. When I pressed another button, the so-called waste level viewfinder popped out, which these cameras had as a standard. However, I knew that these were removed for the lunar program, as the astronauts couldn't look down with their helmets on. As far as I found out later, all the cameras except one were left on the moon for weight reasons. Only the films were brought back. But what I saw when I looked through the viewfinder made me freeze. Okay, I expected to see a sharp image. After all, here the light fell onto the imaging area via a mirror. It's not a screen with pixels, but this image was three-dimensional. This completely confused me. I knew that you needed two slightly different images for a three-dimensional image. This results from the eye distance. If you want a stereoscopic image on a surface, like a monitor these days, you need 3D glasses so that each eye sees something different. Later there were occasionally monitors that had a lenticular film, like those in lenticular prints. Then it worked without glasses. But we are talking about the 60-year-old camera. With such old cameras, you usually look through a viewfinder with one eye. You certainly couldn't have depth perception with one eye. That only works with binoculars or stereo microscopes. I was so used to looking at smartphone displays that this method of photography seemed very similar to me. Only I didn't have depth perception on my phone, and this was much better. How could that be? I slowly understood that we had also lost something in the path of digitalization. It wasn't a display. It didn't even need power. These were mirrors and a Fresnel lens that redirected light rays in such a way that the position of my eyes influenced what I saw on this surface. Not much different than when you look in a mirror, your reflection is also three-dimensional. A fascinating experience for me. It made me realize that the technology of the past can be way more interesting than most people can imagine. I'm on 1415 and the real world is incredible.